If you're a regular viewer of this show, you know that I'm a pretty happy guy. And even though a lot of American politics is really upsetting to cover, generally I have a positive and optimistic outlook on the world. Well, a story came across my desk this morning um, that made me so uncharacteristically angry. I had to really question what the heck was going on. And I'm gonna talk about it with you just disgusted me to the deepest depths of my heart and what it means about the cowardice of some people, one person in particular in this case, but representative of a broader issue, who do not choose their country, do not choose our democracy, do not choose the well-being of Americans over their own political interest or the path of least resistance. And today's example of that is Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr. You might remember that after Trump started trying to overthrow the Democratic election that he lost and keep himself in power, Bill Barr resigned and Bill Barr rejected Trump's attempts and rejected Trump's lies about the election. And this was yet another example of one of those people who is a loyalist all throughout Trump's presidency, but then that's the breaking point for them. And since then, Bill Barr has been speaking out against Donald Trump. Well, now he's speaking out in a different direction. Here's this from CNN. Bill Barr, once an attorney general for Donald Trump, who has since emerged as one of his most prominent critics, and I'll show you examples of that, it'll blow your mind, said on Wednesday that despite his differences with his former boss, he will support the Republican ticket in November. Now, I'll show you this clip again. I'm going to potentially mute my <laughs> own feed listening to this because I can't hear it again because of how angry this makes me. And uh, I'm gonna try to smile through it, all right? <laughs> Just call this hush money case outrageous. Um, and I also know you've been asked many times, you've had your disagreements with the former president. Um, he's the presumptive nominee. We assume he will be the nominee. Will you support him in 2024? Well, I've said all along, you know, given two bad choices, I think it's my duty to pick the person I think would do the least harm to the country. And in, in my mind, that's, uh, I will vote the Republican mm, ticket. You will. I will support the Republican ticket. I think the real danger to the country, the real danger to democracy, as I say, is the progressive agenda. And uh, while Trump, and I said, uh, Trump may be uh, playing Russian roulette, but uh, continuation of the Biden administration is national suicide, in my opinion. Yeah. So the quote unquote progressive agenda is a greater threat to democracy than the guy who tried to end democracy. <sighs> That, that is the embodiment of a lack of courage and character like you rarely see. Because there are some people who are low character because they genuinely believe the garbage of Trump. And that's one thing, right? It almost can feel worse when you acknowledge the threat that Trump poses. You acknowledge how horrible he is and how dangerous he is to the country as I'm about to show you examples of, and then endorse him and then support him because the quote unquote progressive agenda is so dangerous. And as I've said before, God forbid, according to Bill Barr, Joe Biden invests more in roads and bridges and lowers prescription drug costs more and does more legislation like the PACT Act that expanded health care for veterans. What are you talking about? You're referring to a myth about Biden's presidency, not the reality of his policy agenda. And the least that you could do while you advocate for someone who you've talked about how he poses a threat to democracy or at least discussed evidence that bolsters that idea, uh, the least you could do while supporting his effort to get back in the White House and destroy a lot of stuff is do a little research on what it is that Biden's actually been doing and not just your Fox News version of his presidency. My goodness, here is a few examples of Bill Barr being a little bit more honest since the efforts by Trump to overturn the election. It is a horror show when he's when you know when he's left to his own devices. And and so you may want his policies, 
But Trump will not deliver Trump policies. He will deliver chaos. He knew that the claims of stolen election were false, and yet he decided he was going to try to stay in office by subverting that process. There was very grave wrongdoing here, and I think it's reasonable to say that it falls within the obstruction of a proceeding. Our country can't, you know, can't be a therapy session for, you know, a troubled man like this. He is a consummate narcissist. He will always put his own interests and gratifying his own ego ahead of everything else, including the country's interests. Well, that's the same Bill Barr that we just heard from on Fox News. Again, he was Trump's attorney general. And why did he resign in the uh, towards the end of Trump's presidency? Because Trump was using lies about the election being stolen to attempt a coup, to attempt the blocking of the peaceful transfer of power that is an absolute necessity in our democratic process. And here's him in the January 6th committee deposition discussing this. I've been, th I've had, th I had three discussions with the president that I can recall. One was on November 23rd, one was on December 1st, and one was on December 14th. And I've been through sort of the give and take of those discussions. And in that context, I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was bullshit. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to be a part of it, and that's one of the reasons that went into me deciding to leave when I did. I observed, uh, I think it was on December 1st, that, you know, how can we, you can't live in a world where, where the incumbent administration stays in power based on its view, unsupported by specific evidence, that the election, that there was fraud in the election. So you just heard him say there that he resigned because he was observing as something was being attempted that can't happen in a legitimate democratic process, which is the incumbent administration trying to remain in power after they lost an election. And some people, I say again, don't get that that was happening. They don't get the lengths to which Trump and his allies were going to try to prevent Biden from coming into office. And people don't understand the fake elector scheme how that would have thrown us into a constitutional crisis if it were 1% more successful and if there were 1% less reasonable people in the room to push back against some of these things. And Bill Barr at the time was one of those people who was saying, no, I'm not going to use the power of the DOJ to help you stay in power, which is what Trump was trying to have Bill Barr do. And so he's willing to say that's what was going on, an attempt to prevent our democracy from functioning, and destroy the process altogether. And I think Trump should stay pre or should be president again. What? Because again, Biden might invest too much in rural broadband internet. My, I, I don't know how that. Okay. Here, now that we're all good and upset, here's someone who can add a little rationality to this conversation, who gets it, who isn't putting whatever Bill Barr is putting ahead of the country. And Sarah Matthews here, another former Trump administration official, is putting the country above any future career concerns or any political advantage. And uh, she's saying it this way. I think a lot of people are reluctant to speak out. As Miles kind of mentioned, people are concerned with their career prospects and they worry about going against the grain and speaking out against Trump. And then I think, too, that even if there are people who know that Trump is dangerous and maybe are thinking about speaking out, they do not want to go as far as endorsing Joe Biden then. And I've been someone who has said that if my choices in this election are Donald Trump and Joe Biden, then I will have no choice but to jo vote for Joe Biden because because to me, it's not a lesser of two evils situation. There is no comparison here. Even if I don't like the policies of the Biden administration, I'm willing to put that aside because I know that Donald Trump is a danger to our democracy and that he is unfit to ever serve as president again. And so I'm going to do everything I can and use my voice and my platform in order to educate the American people. And that's it right there. That's what it looks like when you have a common dedication to democracy. And what I mean is none of the conversations about how we can, a bunch of Americans unite around protecting our democracy, 
takes away from the importance of other policy issues. And if we have a functioning democracy, Sarah Matthews and I are going to politically battle it out over those policy issues and have a lot of disagreements and debate and it can get heated and all that's perfectly fair. And that's what you do in democracy. That's the beautiful part about democracy. And then after you have those debates, depending on what the people choose, you govern according to what the people have sided with. And that's what it's supposed to look like. And that's okay. But if you don't start with a common dedication to our constitution and our democracy and the continuation of those processes, then everything else falls apart. And so if you actually have the correct principle, the American principle of dedicating oneself to our constitutional democratic process, then obviously, obviously you set aside any other policy concerns for the sake of our democracy. And that's what Bill Barr is unwilling to do for whatever reason. And this adds him to a longer list of Republicans who have chosen the path of least resistance, have chosen career prospects potentially over their country. We're tired of the Donald Trump drama. We want re real Republican drama. Donald Trump's not a Republican. We and to be clear, these are people who have flip-flopped. So they got it at one point, and then they flipped around. What real Republican you drama. Want Trump. If he's off the teleprompter, he can barely keep a, co a cogent thought. You support him for president, even if he's convicted in classified documents. You support him for president, even though you believe he contributed to an insurrection. You support him for president, even though you believe he's lying about the last election. You support him for president, even if he's convicted in the Manhattan case. I just want to say the answer to that is yes, correct? Yeah, me and 51% of America. He's a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. He doesn't represent my party. I'm for Donald Trump because I know what I'm going to get. We need somebody that on day one can get this country back on track. Please help President Trump. If you can fi afford five or ten bucks, if you can't afford a dollar, fine. Just pray. If you got any money to give, give it. There is no way we are going to allow a con artist to take over the conservative movement, and Donald Trump is a con artist. You said it would be an honor to be offered a spot on his ticket. Really? Yeah, I think anyone who's offered the opportunity to serve this country as vice president should be honored. I think the country and the world was a better place when he was president, and, it and I would love to see him return to the White House. I think really there's a sophomore quality that is entertaining about Mr. Trump. But I am worried. I'm very concerned about him having him in charge of the nuclear weapons because I think his response, his, his visceral response to attack people on their appearance, short, tall, fat, ugly. My goodness, that happened in junior high. Are we not way above that? Would we not all be worried to have someone like that in charge of the nuclear Jake, arsenal? Jake. But I'm proud of the job Donald Trump has done as president. So you get the point there. And listen, there are things that you can support through. You can have huge critiques for someone and then still think they're better than the alternative. But with people like Bill Barr, who aren't just talking about Trump being a little, uh, you know, bombastic or impulsive or something and are criticizing him for trying to end democracy, then, yeah, no, you can't flip around on that. And you can't make a case that Biden is a greater threat to democracy, which is what Bill Barr said. And his best evidence for that was the progressive agenda. What? Ugh can't even go back there. I'm going to lose my mind. Uh, I'll leave it there so that I don't. And let me know what you thought in the comments. Try to do so in a way that isn't too vulgar. My goodness.